ready to dive in the Word of God? All right, let's pray. Let's do that. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much just for who you are. And Lord, we do want to just come before you, and we want to acknowledge your goodness, acknowledge your reality. And God, we just uh, um, ask that right now that you would focus our minds and our hearts, our ears into what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so last week we started wrapping up this uh, series of sermons taking us through the book of Joshua. And we've been going through the book of Joshua and we've been talking about these things that Joshua had in his final farewell. He had this farewell speech that, uh, that he made last week, that he started last week. We're going to wrap it up. And last week in his farewell speech, he started talking about this idea of giving God credit of giving God credit for the amazing things that, that He had done all throughout their time. And, and I challenged us this past week, I challenged us to, uh, as a church body, let's give God credit. I want you to think about the big things, the small things, the everyday things, the abnormal things, and I challenged us to give God credit. Now here's what I love. You flooded social media this week. There were hundreds of hundreds of posts on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook using that hashtag, giving God credit. And it was amazing to just see how different people were thinking about relationships that God had blessed them with in their life, how they, uh, or their family that they were blessing with, a season of time in their life, maybe a moment specifically for one thing. But you guys flooded social media this week. What I love about that is that the people around us, our world around us, saw all of that. I had someone that, uh, they're just friends with Kirsten and I, that are not Facebook friends with most of you guys, and like on Monday, uh, she sent us a text that said, did James preach something about giving God credit? Because she clicked on the hashtag and started seeing all the different stuff. So I want to encourage you to do that. If you have uh, Facebook or an Instagram or Twitter, Go this week and click on the hashtag that's there, giving God credit. And what it will do, it's like a filing system. It will pull up all the different things, the hundreds of different things that you and our church family posted throughout this week to give God credit. And it's an amazing thing. That was the reminder that Joshua gave the Israelites last week in the first part of his farewell speech. Now, we come to the second half of his farewell speech we have is Joshua chapter 24. If you don't already have your Bible open, go to Joshua chapter 24. Here, in this part of his farewell speech, this final words that he is saying, these final thoughts that he is saying to the nation of Israel before he comes to the end of his life and thus the end of his leadership in the nation of Israel. And all of a sudden, here in Joshua chapter 24, Joshua, in this part of his farewell speech, gives kind of a review of some pivotal moments in time of God being involved in the life and the story of the nation of Israel. I love it because it's really kind of like this summary, this review of really truly pivotal moments in time of God doing something amazing in the nation of Israel. Look at this, Joshua chapter 24. We're going to pick up and start reading in verse 2. So find that there. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 2, it says this, Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. And from this point on, He is quoting, he is giving the words of God. So the rest of this is God speaking, all right? He says this, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, from ancient times your fathers lived beyond the river, namely Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nerah, and they served with other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac to Isaac. I gave Jacob and Esau, and to Esau I gave Mount Tier to possess it. But Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt by what I did in its midst. Remember those ten plagues that, that God sent through Moses' leadership to Pharaoh? He says, I sent, I sent Moses and Aaron and plagued Egypt by what I did in its midst, and afterwards I brought you out. Verse 6. I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And Egypt, Pharaoh's armies, as he's talking about, and Egypt pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. But when they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your own eyes saw what I did in Egypt. And you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you into the land of the Amorites who lived beyond the Jordan, and they fought with you. And I gave them into your hands, and you took possession of their land when I destroyed them before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, 
king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel. And he sent and summoned Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I was not willing to listen to Balaam. So he had to bless you, and I delivered you from his hand. You crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the citizens of Jericho fought against you. And the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and Gergesites, the Hivite and the Jebusites. Thus I gave them into your hand. Then I sent the hornet before you, and it drove out the two kings of Amorites from before you, but not by your sword or bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, the cities which you had not built, and you have lived in them. You have eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. See, Joshua took this moment in time in this speech, and he goes, let's just remember, we've talked about this, let's remember, let's have a review here of some pivotal moments of God being so real into the story of the nation of Israel. And into the story of, of the journey that your generations and the generations before you have gone through. And he says, let's just look back at the moments of God being involved in your story. So when I think about that, I think this is a great time for us to look back at the stories of God through the book of Joshua. See, through the book of Joshua, we got to see so much amazing things about the things of God. It started all the way back when we very first started this series, starting the book of Joshua, when God chose Joshua to put him in place as a leader. After the death of Moses, the nation of Israel needed a leader, right? And so God saw Joshua, saw a man who was faithful, saw a man who was strong, saw a man who was courageous, and he says, Joshua, you're the one, you're the next leader of the nation of Israel. Why? Because we saw this. Joshua was courageous enough and strong enough to stand in the minority. You remember the 2 verses 10? The two spies, him and Caleb, standing against the ten spies who rallied the entire nation of Israel to be against them. They said, we can't go into this land. It has huge giants. The cities are fortified. We would die there. We may as well just go back to Egypt and be slaves again. Joshua, along with his buddy Caleb, stood strong in that. We learned this about that. We learn that we have to sometimes stand strong. We have to be willing to take a stand. That we have to be willing to take a stand even if it means that we are in the minority. Take a stand on the truths of God. Take a stand on the belief of God. Take a stand on the, the values of God. But we are going to take a stand and truly follow after God. That's what we learned. We learned about the nation of this generation of Israel who had the courage to take and, and step forward following God. Remember their fathers? Their fathers and the generation before them had stood outside the Canaan land and God said, it's yours, go take it. They got scared and said, no, we can't do it. So he puts them on this journey through the wilderness for 40 years. And so that generation dies off. And this generation that we're in in the book of Joshua, they say, we are going to co-possess the land. We believe God has told us it's our land. We believe God is giving it to us. We are going to be obedient to him. We're going to be faithful to him. Sometimes we have to have that kind of obedience. We have to be faithful and say, you know what? God spoke. God said, I'm going to do. I'm going to step out. Maybe, it's a, hey, maybe we'd be reminded of the pivotal moment when they stood at the Jordan River. A time when they said, okay, it's time for us to go possess the land. We are going to be strong. We are committed. We are going to do what God wants us to do. And as soon as they did that, they came up to a Jordan River that's normally a calm, flowing river, and they find this raging river that's overflown, overflowing its banks. And, why, and you would think, but wait a second, they decided they would want to do what God wanted them to do, right? There's so many times in my life that I said, yes, I'm going to be committed. I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start living for God. And the first time we really do that, what happens? We come to some kind of roadblock. And they came to a roadblock, and what did they do? Did they turn around? No, we can be reminded that God said, just step out. Remember, he told them to step in, put both feet into the edge of the Jordan River. And as soon as they did, he said, be still. And what happened? The Jordan River stopped flowing. It parted, and it dried up for them to walk across. Sometimes we have to be reminded from that, that pivotal moment about God. And sometimes God is just saying to us, I just need you to step out. And if you will just step out and then be still and watch what I do. Because so all many times we try to figure things out. We try to do it in our own power. We try to do that. Or we're so scared. We're so unknown about all the uncertainties. We won't even step out. And sometimes God says, I just need you to step out and then stand still and watch what I do with your faith. Watch what I do with your courage. Watch what I do with your obedience. Maybe we can be reminded about after they crossed that Jordan River, before the Jordan waters came back on, they took stones 
out of the middle of that river. They took stones to the edge to the edge and the bank there, and they built this memorial. They built this memorial out of those stones. They call them the memorial stones because it was this memorial to remind the generations after them about the provision and the power of God. That God had just provided them. The power of God had spread that sea, had spread that Jordan River open so they could walk across. God had provided for them in His power. And they wanted the generations behind them to see this stone memorial and ask, what is this for? So that they had the opportunity to say, well, let me tell you about God. Let me tell you about the time He provided for us. Let me tell you about the power. And we were challenged in this. What kind of spiritual legacy are we leaving to the generations behind us? What kind of spiritual memorials are you leaving to your children, to your grandchildren, to your nieces, to your nephews? What kind of spiritual legacy are we leaving to the generations behind us? Those memorials that are built so that the generations behind us will ask us, hey, what is that about? Hey, what does that mean? And you have the opportunity to tell them about the power of God in your life. That you have the opportunity to tell them about the provision of God in your family. Why? Because the spiritual legacy that we want to leave them for God. Maybe Maybe we can be reminded of the pivotal moment when in the nation of Israel, they actually begin to face defeat. When they were in, the, in Ai, and they faced defeat, and they were trying to figure out why are we being defeated? God has given us victory. And all of a sudden, God showed them that there was sin in their camp. And so often in our life, we, we don't take sin seriously. What God was trying to teach them and show them was that sin is serious. And you can try to cover it up. You can try to hide it. You can try to bury it underneath the tent. But God knows it's there. And that sin that's in that camp affects all the people around you and the community around you. And so they had to co- confront Achan. And he had to confess of his sin. And he had to bring that forth to light. But see, what happens in our life, sometimes we want to cover up sin. We want to bury it. We want to think it's not that big a deal. It's not that serious. There's people that have worse things in me and God wants us to know that sometimes we need to always take sin seriously and sometimes we need to consecrate ourselves we need to set ourselves apart we need to separate ourselves from that sin we need to separate ourselves from that environment we need to separate ourselves from from those people whatever it is and when we do that like the nation of Israel at that moment they came back they had this renewed commitment to be renewed to the truth and the power and following after God sometimes that's what we have to do Maybe we were reminded about the pivotal moment in the stories of Joshua of the day that the sun stood still. The day that Joshua stood on that mountain overlooking his armies fighting this battle and they knew they were on the verge of defeating this enemy that God had them to defeat, but the sun was going down and if it got dark, the enemies would escape. And so Joshua had the audacity to say to God, hey, would you keep the sun up in the sky so we can see and defend this? And what did God do? The sun stood still that day. Why? Because Joshua had an audacious faith in his audacious God. And sometimes we need to be challenged that we need to have an audacious faith that we believe that God is a big, powerful God and that God can do anything. But so often what you and I do, we do this. We put God in a little box, don't we? We put God in so that if we keep him in this box that we can logically explain to people that can make sense to us, then that's easier to handle, right? But I'm telling you, if your God fits into a logically explained box, your God is not big enough. Because it's this, sometimes God is so big and God is so powerful, you say, I don't know how he's going to do this, I don't know, but I'm just going to believe and I'm going to ask and I'm going to go to him and I'm going to have the audacity to ask an audacious God to do something audacious in my life. All throughout the stories, we see all throughout the book of Joshua the faithfulness of God, God providing for them, God taking battles for them, God defeating these things for them, those things for them, defeating the city of Jericho for them. All of this, you see, this whole series really was not about Joshua. This whole series really was not about this generation of Israel. This whole series and what we can leave from here is about God, who He is, and what He is, and how powerful He is. That is what Joshua is telling them in his farewell speech. He takes these four, we have his 14 verses, and he takes this moment in time, he says, look at all the pivotal moments in in the history of our nation, in the history of the generations around us. Look at all the pivotal moments of God. As we go through Joshua, that's what we need to do. Look at all the pivotal moments that God stepped up, that God shined here, that God did this. That is what it's about. 
That's what he's saying to them. You remember all the pivotal moments? All of this happened, all of this happened. And then he makes this statement. Look at verse 14. He says, now therefore. Look at verse 14. He says, now therefore. He's just gone through this very summarized 10,000 foot overview or review of God stepping in and God doing amazing things in the history of their people. And he makes this statement, now therefore. In other words, what are you going to do with that? We have seen the amazing work of God. We have seen the amazing movements of God. We've seen the amazing stories of God. We've seen the goodness of God. We've seen the faithfulness of God. We have seen the power of God. Now, therefore, in other words, there's something to do with that now. Because of God, therefore, look what the verse says in verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth. If we begin to truly recognize all that God is and who He is, now therefore, fear the Lord. Now we've got to break that down a little bit because our English translation gives us that connotation that fearing the Lord means, am I like supposed to be down here on earth being scared? Like, oh, if I mess up, God's going to like this, kind of like this cosmic killjoy who's going to like throw lightning down into my life and He's just waiting for me to mess up so He can punish me and I live in this fear. No, that's not what it is. Our English language gives us that connotation. But the actual meaning of this phrase, the actual meaning of the language here, when it says to fear the Lord, is simply this, to be in awe of Him. To respect Him. To respect who He is as God. To be in awe of Him as God. And when I'm in respect, and when I'm in this place of awe of God, it puts my place, my heart, my mind, and my attitude in this place of submission. I submit myself to an amazing God who's done all of these things. When I start to really recognize the bigness of God and the power of God, and I see His work and all the things around me, I become in awe of Him. Christman said this, if you were up early this morning and you saw the sun, how many of you did see that? Anybody see the sky this morning? It was amazing. I mean, it's just a, the beauty of the orange just blasting the sky when the sun came up. When I saw it this morning, I stopped and had to take a picture because it truly puts me in awe. Every time, it's a moment in time for me. Every time I see it, and I'm not an early riser, but every time I see the sunrise and it's beautiful like that, I truly, like, I become in awe of God. Literally, I will stop anytime I see that and say, God, you are amazingly creative. Thank you for letting me see that. Because it puts me in awe of a creative powerful, amazing God. That's what it says here. Therefore, since you've recognized who God is and you see the power and the pivotal moments of God in your life, therefore, fear God. In other words, be in awe of Him. Live your life in respect of Him. Let your awe and your respect put your heart in this place of submission to Him. Look at the verse again. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth. Serve Him. Some of your translations may use that word instead of serve. It may say worship. In other words, worship Him or serve Him. Same connotation is this, that I'm serving you. I'm doing things for you with my heart. I'm doing things for you with my words. I'm doing things for you with my actions. The life that I live, my service, my worship of you. And He says, I want you to, therefore, since you've recognized how big and amazing God is and faithful and all that He's done for you, you fear Him, you're in awe of Him, and in all that you serve him you worship him in sincerity and truth break that down a little bit sincerity and truth it's about this wholeheartedness it's about this with all of my faithfulness it's my total commitment because i've recognized how amazing god is because i've seen and acknowledged the work of god throughout my life and the things around my life and the generations around me Therefore, I'm going to be totally, completely committed to Him. I'm going to wholeheartedly serve Him. I'm going to wholeheartedly worship Him in this place of being in awe of who He is. This is what Joshua is saying to the nation of Israel. Let's be in awe. Look at this next verse. In the second part of verse 14, I'll read it from the beginning. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth. Then he goes on to say, and says, Put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says that he he makes a statement to them. He says, you 
I'm challenging you to put away the gods of your father, the generations before you, the things that distracted them from the true and living God. Maybe it was the gods, the false gods of the false religions across the Jordan or the, and the land that they've come into. And then you have to, all these gods that have separated them, in other words, things that have distracted them from following after the true, living, almighty God. And he says, I want you to choose today. Are you going to choose these gods, the things that distract you, the things of the false religion, the things of this world that distract you? Or are you going to choose God? But it's your choice. That's what he says to them. He makes a statement, and he says, this is your choice. You choose whom you're going to serve. But then he makes a bold statement. He takes a stand before them. It's kind of like when you see someone making their final, their final plea, their final word, and you're like, Here, if you don't remember anything else, remember this. I kind of see Joshua saying that. You choose. You choose what you want, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, my life, my family, my house, my circle of influence, we are going to worship God. I don't really care what you guys do. I don't care what you guys do. I'm taking a stand that I am going to serve the Lord. My family is going to serve the Lord. This, again, is the strength and the courage and the obedience of Joshua shining through. I mean, he is shining through one final moment of him standing strong, one final moment of him being courageous, one final moment of him being obedient to God that he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now look at verse 16. Let's see how they respond to this stand. Verse 16, the people answered and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is He who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us all through the way in which we went and among all the peoples through whom midst we passed. The Lord drove out from before us all the peoples, even the Amorites who lived in this land. We also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Israel declares right there in unison, how... Far be it that we should turn our back on the God who's taking care of us. We recognize all these things about Him. We recognize how He's had these pivotal moments all throughout our history. He's faithful to us. He's provided for us. He's defeated enemies for us. Far be it that we turn our back on Him and serve any other God. As for us, today, we will serve the Lord. We will worship the Lord, for He is God. It's this declaration that Joshua made, this declaration that he stood up before people and made. And them, they stood together as a nation and as a people of God, and they said, we, together, we will serve the Lord. We will not turn our back on Him. We understand and recognize who He is. These declarations. These declarations of commitment. Sometimes, I think now on us and say, we have that same choice. As we leave the book of Joshua, as we leave the study, we have the choice to choose this day who we will worship. Choose this day who we will serve. To lay down any other gods, and I really don't think, I, I don't think that there's anyone here who is, who is worshiping a god of a false religion but I think there are a lot of gods that we worship, a lot of gods that we serve, a lot of things that come in between us and God. And those things that come in between us and our commitment to God, us and our fellowship with God, us and our relationship with God, us and whatever with God, those things that come between us and God, those become our God. So maybe that's that job or that career that you're chasing after or that job, that career that gets all of your attention, that gets all of your sacrifice. Maybe it's those, those that the riches or the possessions that you're just longing after that truly has captured your heart. Maybe it's just the sense of comfort in your life that you have to always be in a comfortable place. Maybe it's relationships that's in your life, relationships that you're going after. But whatever those things are that come between you and God, those become your gods. And it says this, that Joshua challenges us as we leave this book of Joshua and we begin to recognize really who God is. We begin to see His faithfulness. We begin to see His power. We begin to see His provision. We get to leave this book of Joshua deciding who am I going to serve? 
who am I going to worship? I think because of God, because of what we've learned and challenged about with God in this study, I think there's some commitment. I think there are some declarations that we together can make. This declaration that I'm going to be strong in Him. That I'm going to truly be strong in Him. And I understand that. I begin to understand the strength of God and the power of God, the ability of God. That in no matter what battle I may be facing, no matter what enemy God may be bringing my way, I am going to be strong in Him. I'm not going to depend upon my own strength. I know I can't be strong enough. I know I can't face this battle on my own. I know I can't walk through that valley on my own. I know I don't have the strength to climb that mountain on my own. But I have declared that I am going to be strong in Him. Maybe it's this declaration of commitment to say, you know what, I'm going to be courageous for Him. That, that I'm going to be courageous. When life gets scary, when life gets a little uncertain, when God asks me to do this, God asks me to do that, when God lays something on my heart, and I don't know what's really happening, I don't have all my ducks in a row, there's some uncertainty in there, there's some scaredness in there, I am declaring that I am going to be courageous for Him. That I'm going to be courageous and step out when God asks me to step out. It's this declaration of commitment that says, you know what? I'm going to be obedient to Him. I'm going to be obedient to Him even when it's easy and when it's not easy. When it's easy, I'm going to be obedient to Him. But even when it's not easy, I'm going to be obedient to Him. Even when it's popular or unpopular, I'm going to be obedient to the truths of God, to the principles of God, to the ways of God. Maybe it's this declaration of commitment that says, you know what? I'm going to be dependent on upon him that i'm truly going to be dependent upon him i'm no longer going to try to depend on my own ways and my own life and my own things i understand that he is in charge i understand that god is the one in charge and i begin to understand that i am going to lean on that and that is where i'm going to find direction that is where i'm going to find strength that's what i'm going to lean on because my commitment is i'm going to be dependent upon him as for me and my house as for me and my life, we will serve the Lord. That was the stand that Joshua made. Can that be the stand that we make? That we are going to be strong in Him. That we are going to be courageous for Him. That we're going to truly be obedient to Him that we are going to be dependent upon Him, that on this day, at this point, as we leave this book of Joshua, He asks us, Coastal Life Church, choose this day whom you're going to serve. What kind of commitment are you ready to make? How about you? How, are you ready to leave this book of Joshua with a renewed commitment like Joshua and the Israelites, a renewed commitment into an almighty, powerful God. Are you ready to take a stand in your life, a pivotal moment in your life that says, my life or my family, we are going to serve God. day when you came in there was a card just like this on everybody's seat I ask you to take this card out right now it's an image, a graphic that we've used all series long it depicts a stand it depicts taking a stand saying I am ready to be strong in him I'm ready to be obedient to him I'm ready to be courageous for him I'm ready to be dependent upon him but see, courageous obedience is not for the faint of heart. It's for people to say, you know what? I recognize and I see who God is. I see who He can be in my life. And I'm taking a stand to be committed to Him. I'm taking a stand to truly be committed to Him. And I don't know what your commitment out of this series is. I don't know what it is for you personally. I don't know what it is for your family. Maybe it's a 
a commitment to say, you know what, we're going to leave here, and we, we really haven't been, I haven't been that faithful to getting plugged into to attending a church and a service, and, and I need to make sure that I'm committing to attend church more faithfully. Maybe it's a commitment to say, you know what, I understand how important it is now to be connected in relationship with other Christian people, and so I'm committing to get connected into relationships. Maybe it's like I didn't realize how many ways there was I could serve and how much need there was for me to serve in my church, and so I am going to start serving from this day forward. I am going to worship my God that way. Maybe it's for you, it's you're going to dive deeper into some personal worship. Maybe you need to personally get into the Word of God on your own throughout the week. You need to develop some time that you're personally praying for yourself with your family. Maybe it's your family going, you know what? We as a family are going to commit to getting into the Word of God together. We as a family are going to sit around and we're going to pray together. Maybe it's some way that you've got to step out. And I don't know what way it is that you are being challenged to be committed. Let's just take a stand. Maybe it's to take a stand uh, against that, that wrong attitude that you have. Take a stand against that addiction. Take a stand against your own self sometimes. Is that I'm going to take a stand, and from this day forward, I'm going to declare, no matter what anybody else does, for me and my life, for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And maybe there's some very practical things. I'm going to give you just a moment. And I want you to take the back of this card, and I want you to take a pen. And I want you to think for yourself, what are some declarations of commitment that you can leave this series and the study of Joshua with? Maybe it's some of those things I mentioned. Maybe it's something totally different. Maybe you were here for all the series of Joshua. Maybe you're here for a few. Maybe this is your first time. But today, you're understanding that today, you are going to be committed. To, you're going to take that stand and say, as for me and my life, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And here's some action steps. Here's some commitment that I make. You may write that in the form of a prayer. You may write that in the form of some bullet points. I don't know what speaks to you, but I want you right now just to take some moment and some time and answer the question. This is for you. You're going to take this home. And I want you to answer this question. Who are you choosing today? What are you choosing to serve and worship today? Take that moment. Write those things down. And then I want to challenge you this. I want you to pray. I want you just to close your eyes and I want you to pray through these commitments. Maybe you do that individually. Maybe there's some of you here with your family and you want to circle up with your family right now and you want to pray together and say, we today as a family are choosing to serve and worship the Lord. And maybe you want to have this time of prayer as a family. Maybe you have it individually. But let's respond today. Who this day are you choosing to serve? You know, that there's an amazing in those lyrics that Christ is enough for me that is a truth that we speak about here every week that Christ is everything that we need in our life see we all have that choice we we talked about the choice today uh, of choosing this day who I'm going to serve choose this day who I'm going to worship there's a choice that we have first of all of choosing Christ See, a lot of us, we, 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 we think that Christ really is enough because we try to do a lot of other things. We think that we have to clean up our life before we come to God. We think we have to go to church a lot. We think we have to uh, read the Bible a lot. We think we have to keep a bunch of rules. We, we, we think that we have to give away things. We think we have to do this or that. The reality is, Jesus Christ is enough for our salvation. He is all that is needed for our salvation. That salvation means this relationship that I have with God, being brought into relationship with God, given an eternity in a very real place called heaven. It was all done with Jesus Christ when he came to this earth and he died on a cross. When he allowed them to drive the spikes into his hands, he allowed the blood to flow from his body and he gave up his life so that he could defeat sin for you and me. See, he's been defeating all kinds of enemies for us. He defeated the grave because in three days he arose again. His defeat of sin, his defeat of the grave was for your salvation and my salvation. 
It was the fact that we all have sin in our life. We are all sinners, and that sin has broken and kept us from being in relationship with God, a holy God. But he did something about it when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, who is enough for your salvation. He is enough, and you and me get to come to that point that we realize that I'm a sinner. We realize that Jesus had to die on the cross for my personal sins, and the fact that he did that, if I would accept and believe that for my salvation, it says I am given the gift of salvation. My sins are forgiven. I'm brought into relationship with a holy God. And in that relationship, I know I have eternity in heaven, no matter when my life ends, because we never know when it's going to end. But we know this. We know that if I've trusted in that for my salvation, that I'm given an eternity in a very real place. Called heaven. Your choice. You choose today if you are willing to accept Christ or not. Maybe you have never come to that point in your life to accept that as your truth, to accept that place, your belief in what Jesus Christ did for your salvation. But what he did was enough for you. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for a moment. And maybe you just now, there's something stirring in you that you know you've been trusting in a lot of other things for your salvation. But Christ is enough. His death, his resurrection was the payment for your sins. And maybe right now you are ready to choose and make that choice to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. In the quietness of your heart and your mind, you could pray any prayer. It could be something like this. Just declare to him, declare to God right now that you believe and you realize that you are a sinner. You recognize that Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sins. You place your trust, you place your belief, and you accept that your salvation is because Jesus Christ died for you, and you're accepting that in yourself right now. Have that conversation with God right now. If that was you, if in that moment in time just now you prayed and you accepted Christ, you placed your faith in Jesus Christ for your salvation. I want to encourage you to tell somebody that today. Share that with someone here. Maybe one of the church leaders you see. Maybe you simply want to stop at the desk that says, get connected out there today. And there's someone there that just want to give you a packet. That's all they want to do. We just go and say, hey, can I have one of those new believers packets? Because today I accept the Christ. Share that with someone today. Because Jesus Christ is enough.